Oh, if QPR had Aysworth in charge, they'd be down by now. Marty is doing the job, isn't he? Good evening, Jared. Welcome good back. Evening. How are you? I'm, I'm good, yeah. Really good. All right, let's start with the obvious then. If Aysworth was in charge, do you think QPR would already be relegated? Yeah, I think we would be probably where, where Rotherham are. Um, I don't think there's there's any doubt that the confidence of the players has changed since Marty's come in. The style of football's changed. The way that he's been able to strengthen in January has had a massive impact. Um, yeah, I think most QPR fans would, would be certain that we'd be in the same position as Rotherham. All right, this is an exciting finish to the league then. In this video, we are going to look at QPR's home fixtures and compare them to all the others and see which set of home fixtures we would prefer. And we also want to talk to you about Cook, whether him being in the middle makes a difference to QPR's success on the pitch. And we're going to mention Willock and Chair, just how good they are as, as well, if that's all right. Um, so, Jared, um, first of all, welcome back from, from Bristol City. Yeah. Um do you know, they beat Southampton midweek and you're thinking, come on, you know, um, as a Bristol City fan, you must they must have gone into that game thinking it's QPR. Do you think they underestimated you? I don't think they underestimated us. I think if they had seen our performance against Stoke, they would have had no no fear going into that game. Honestly, the, the Stoke game genuinely was two of the worst teams in the league and <laughs> we deserved absolutely nothing. And uh, I I still can't believe the turnaround in three days to play like that on Wednesday to play to playing how we did do on Saturday. It beggars belief that a team can switch in three days. Um, yeah, yeah. And is, was that personnel? Is that tactics, or was just a good old rollicking? Uh, the personnel definitely definitely helped. He went in on on Wednesday with Paul Smith and Sinclair Armstrong, and I think one of those can play. I think when you play both of them, there's a lack of composure, a lack of finishing ability. So they both dropped out at the weekend. And he went for a kind of a more a more controlled way way of playing, really. When Armstrong and Smith play, it's a bit more direct. We use use their pace a lot. Against Stoke, I was actually surprised at how many long balls we played, especially in, in the first half. And he changed that up. Um, a bit of a slower pace at the weekend, but it absolutely suited the players that that he picked. And he made a brave um, change at right back as well. He played Jimmy Dunn, who's I think played there once before for us, but that was quite a bold a bold call, really. And it worked out really, really well. He had a really good game, actually. He was in the team of the week for the championship as well. Yeah, it seemed to play with a lot more urgency and energy as well. Um, the, the, the three behind Dykes um, played well on. They have the they have the ability, don't they, each week? But Chair Willock and, and Anderson, in particular, I thought was was superb. Yeah, I commented on about half an hour and said um, on social media that Anderson was struggling a bit physically and couldn't quite get. And then suddenly something clicked. It was his first start, um, and he was he was outstanding. Yeah, really calm and composed, and that type of player one hundred percent brings out the best in Willock and Chair because they're all on on the same wavelength. It was Chris Willock's best game in 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 ages, to be fair. Probably it's his best game since Mick Beale was in charge. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 18 months ago. <laughs> Sad what's happened to him. Um, <laughs> but yeah, those those three again, I think he that's kind of clicked now. So I would have thought that will be the, the three that play behind one of the strikers. <laughs> Um, what about um, when Bell went off? Did you did you think you seemed to lose a little bit of impetus when 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 he went off? Um, I think it it really helped us. He looked quite dangerous for for Bristol City in, in the first first fifteen minutes, and the kind of he looked like their main threat. Um, and when he when he when he he pulled up, I think you could hear like feel a sense sense of, yeah. of relief because he was he was up against against Jimmy Dunn as well yeah. who's not played right back really so I think that kind of changed changed it in our favour I'd say. Yeah. Okay. Um so do you believe that you can get out of this? If you'd asked me before Saturday after the Stoke game it was an absolute no we okay. we are doomed. It is amazing how quickly it can change. Um I think <laughs> I think everybody above us losing at the weekend was massive. Yeah. Um, I think we've got the personnel too. I think even if we get a couple of injuries now, I think there's just about enough strength to kind of cope with one or two injuries. Um, there's competition for places, which seems to be bringing out the best in some of the players as well. Um, yeah, it's amazing how much it can change on one one performance. 
All right, let's look at the home fixtures then um, that QPR have got remaining and compare it to um, to the other teams. So um, obviously a huge game, which we'll talk about with Rotherham this weekend. And then following that, um, I'm a little bit worried because um, you've got West Brom, which is tough. Millersbrough are better away from home than they are at home. Birmingham, who've got their act together. And then <laughs> Sheffield Wednesday, which yeah. is huge. Preston, who Preston, who won't have anything to play for at yeah. that point. And then in their last away game of the season, when they might need it to go up, um, you've got Leeds. I, said, I think you've got the toughest of the four. Yeah, I think when you add in the Rotherham game at the weekend, you're you're playing two of the teams that are below you in the league. So really, realistically, they should be looking for victories. However, you've got to add the caveat, we've won three home games all season. So I don't know what suddenly makes us think we can win <laughs> five of those. I genuinely don't, don't, don't know. And we've had winnable home games in the last couple of months. We had Plymouth at home in December, had 10 men for an hour. We still couldn't beat them. We had Huddersfield recently where we went in thinking, yeah, this is a must win. We couldn't beat them. So I... It's sad to say, I don't think we can rely on the home form. But the the bigger games, the West Brom, the Middlesbrough, the Leeds game, we do tend to pick up points when we don't, when no, nobody ex- expects us to. So, so I think when you add that in, I think the West Brom game is a midweek game. The atmosphere is always good. They'll bring lots of fans. The Borough fans travel really well. So there's there's some big games there where you. You would have thought West Brom, Borough, Birmingham, Sheffield Wednesday and Leeds will all sell out the away end. So it's going to be some some exciting games, I think. I did say to a friend at the weekend, my worst case scenario is Leeds relegating us in that game and going up on the same day. I just I, I don't think I could sit there watching them celebrate. No, no, you want to have it. You definitely want to have it done yeah. by then. And, yeah. you know, you mean you. You, you could beat Rotherham, you could beat Sheffield Wednesday, you could beat Preston, and, and that might just be enough. That might just be enough to to stay with a couple of couple of a couple points of away here and there. Thought, yeah. 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 All right, so we'll look, look ahead to Rotherham then um this weekend. Um you you've said it yourself, these 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 are the games that you haven't done so so well in. Um this is a well, this is a, a six pointer. It's a seven pointer, isn't it? Um, do you think Rotherham are gone? Yeah, I think. I don't think they can. They can survive now, but they could definitely get a result at the weekend. Um, yeah. I know. I know that every team thinks that they're the best team for somebody to play when they're in bad form when they haven't won away. I think. I think Rotherham haven't won away for since October twenty twenty two. Jordan Hughes not scored a goal in 21 games, I think. And honestly, if you look back historically, the, the amount of times we've had teams come to QPR with that kind of record and beat us, usually with 10 men maybe as well. Um, and again, I joked at the weekend that it'll be a Jordan Hughes 90th minute winner for a 1-0 Rotherham victory. Um, <laughs> I, I would be, I'm 100% more confident of getting a result away at Leicester the following weekend than I am of beating Rotherham at the weekend. <laughs> Um, when you went uh, to the New York Stadium, it was uh, a one-one draw, wasn't it? Um, back in it was back in Marty's, November. Marty's first game. I think. It was Marty's first game, wasn't it? Yeah, I yeah. think he commented on it, yeah. on it on there as well. Um, so, in honour of that, um, your manager then, um, even if you do, if you do go down, do you think he'd stay? I think everybody at the club wants him to stay. I think the fans have made that really, really clear. The support he's got has been outstanding. We took two and a half thousand to Bristol the weekend. The home games are selling out each each week. Our average attendance is kind of up about two and a half thousand from five or six years ago when we were kind of comfortably mid mid table. And I think a lot of that has to do with the manager. Um, however, I I do think there would be clubs clubs interested in him probably at home. And abroad, um, I, I would like to think he would he would stay. I think they are clearly put it, putting up a fight for him, and I think if we do go down, it won't be for one of of trying. So yeah. um, I think everybody would hope that he would he would stay. 
Yeah, um, he's certainly learnt a lot, hasn't he? The last since the last time he played uh, <laughs> Rotherham. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. All right, let's get some score predictions from you then. Um, it's a massive one. QPR Rotherham. Um, I really, really want to say a home win. I really want to have the confidence to say it, but I haven't got the confidence to say it. So I'm going to go. <laughs> Not even it's oh, Rotherham. Come on. Even it's Rotherham. I'm going to go a one-one draw. I don't want to tempt fate. Right, a one-one okay. draw with the hope that maybe, maybe we could um, kind of improve that home form. Okay. All right. Yeah, you don't want this being a League One fixture, do you? Next uh, no. next year, no. anyway. Don't. All right. Thanks for joining us, Jared. If your QPR fan hasn't yet subscribed, please do so. And twelve more cup finals to go, Jared, and then you can relax yes people keep saying 12 more cup finals but if people have seen our record in cups we really don't want to play them as cup <laughs> that's finals that's cup true finals. actually yeah, yeah. <laughs> 12 more away games let's just call it games, that. Yeah. all right nice one catch you next week cheers thanks mark cheers. Thank you.